I want to. I want to go ahead. I want to go ahead and kick this thing off. Want to okay. talk about the book, man? Okay. Hughes, Hughes of Hope: A Colorful Journey Outside the Lines. Yeah. Right. I, I, I want. Let, let's, let's go ahead and get into it. So, what what events occurred in your life to prompt you to write Hughes of Hope in comparison to the blueprint for a successful career? Yeah, man, that's a great question, and it, it's kind of a multifaceted answer. And one of the main reasons is because, well, to kind of even backtrack, I started writing that book in 2019. And it just came out a few weeks ago, right? So you're talking about a five-year process. But I'm one of those ones where I, I forgive myself, right? Because I'm one of the ones where I just, if I'm not feeling the creative juices flowing, I'm just not going to do it at that point in time. And so I got to a point where I had to kind of actually live the story out in order to make it what it was. And the book's title has changed at least six times, right? And so I always tell people, don't write the title first, right? That should be last because you never know what direction, as an author, you know how that goes. You never know what direction the spirit or where the, uh, where the curse is gonna lead you. And so I finally kind of landed upon Hues of Hope, A Colorful Journey, because it kind of aligned with the whole rebrand I underwent uh, last fall after I would say six or seven years of kind of being, and I wouldn't say all over the place, but it's kind of one of those things where if you didn't know me and you were just kind of walking into a random store and you had a book that represented you know, different speakers, brands, or just personal brands, mine would have had all kind of crap on it, right? It would have had Will Baggett, the blueprint for a successful career. It would have had executive image. It would have had bag talk. And it's like, okay, what is the true narrative here? Like, what is he really doing? What's he really about? Because you know, as a speaker, you have to be a safe bet, mm -hmm. right? And so people can't depend on you to deliver a specific message. You can't really build authority in any given space if you're trying to be everything to everybody. And so while all those pieces were, a, were, I guess, in ways fragments of me or part of me, it, there was no vertical alignment or integration that would make a passerby just want to say, hey, I want to pick that up and see what it's all about. And so I had to look at myself objectively and also understand that in order to get to where you want to be or if you, have, you have to look like what you want to get paid, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? You, want to, you have to look like what you want to get paid for or what amount you want to receive. And so... I had to undergo an objective look at my brand and I just looked at it and said, it's not good enough for where I'm trying to go. Mm -hmm. And so hired a branding expert, you know, and just kind of from start to finish, really just evaluated my life and what it was all about and what really fit. And there were some other experiences I had that um, we can talk more about. But one of the main life experiences, I think, that fueled me because I started writing the book in 2019 because uh, I've always been into creative writing and the blueprint was more on the professional development do this, do that, right? Very educational and kind of tactical. But I think in today's day and age with everything we've been through in the past years and what people are still going through, uh, seen and unseen, said and unsaid, I wanted to give something that was quick, easy, and inspirational. And a lot of the actual stories in there actually are true. The ones that are the most outlandish are the ones that are true. <laughs> like the little natural happenings, those are things I had to, you know, I filled in to pad the story to make it make sense. But the the teacher galloping around the classroom on a horse head, that was true. It actually happened. Meeting a guy named Boyce Williams in Atlanta, Georgia, that actually happened. So uh, it, would really, it was really, again, me living out the story. And I think the last thing that put the, the bow on top was I was working as an associate teacher at a Kip Truth School in 2021. Not many people knew that, right? And Lubbock Smith, shout out to Lubbock Smith, who helped me get that opportunity at a time where I really needed it. And I met a young man, uh, his name was Jalen, and what he would always do without fail, he's like a kindergartner slash first grader, without fail, he would always, when he got his coloring sheets, he would be all over the place, just outside those lines, right? He had no, it was like, he was incorrigible. Like he just did not want to follow the standard, you know, status quo. And I began to observe him. And finally, one day the teacher asked him, she was like, Jalen, like, why can't you stay inside the lines? And he said in the most, this most direct and sweetest six-year-old voice I've ever heard, it's not that I can't stay inside the lines. It's just that this paper isn't big enough for me to express myself. Mm -hmm. And that's when I thought about like, wow, you know, how many people have outgrown spaces, places, situations, people, and they're still occupying that space. And so he was basically kind of rebelling against that because he wanted more space and more freedom, more creative freedom to express himself. And Jalen taught me an important lesson that day. And that's the main reason why he was the star of the promo video that I put out for Hughes of Hope.
That's the same kid from 2021.